Hello, welcome to this series of videos where we look at inverse trig functions. I'm going to introduce you or hopefully reintroduce you to the inverse trig functions and we're going to look at their derivatives. Uh, first up is arc sine. y equals the arc sine of x. Now, another symbol for it is sine with a minus 1 in the spot normally where there's an exponent. But that minus 1 is not an exponent. The minus 1 is the symbol for inverse function. And so, just please don't get it mixed up. When there's a minus one in that spot, it's not an exponent. It's not, it's not the reciprocal guy. So, for that reason, I'll be using the word arc sign so that we don't get that confusion. Um, so, what does it mean? Uh, inverse sine function. So, what do inverse functions do? They switch the input and the output. So what does the sine function happen? Input is an angle. The output is the sine of that angle. And it's defined everywhere. It's not invertible, though. To be invertible, you have to pass both the horizontal and the vertical line test. And this will definitely fail the horizontal line test, meaning that there's infinitely many places where some horizontal lines cross this function. So what you have to do is restrict the domain. Only look at a certain interval of x values where you'll pass the horizontal line test and the vertical line test. By convention, we've decided that the part that you should look at is minus pi over 2 to pi over 2. That way we all have the same answers. So only use these angles. No other angles can be used as the input to sine and therefore the output to arc sine. All right, the range will be minus one to one. The domain will be minus pi over two to pi over two. That's for sine. And then they flip flop and the domain is gonna be minus one to one for arc sine. And the range is gonna be minus pi over two to pi over two. That's what the graph of arc sine looks like actually. Not the dash part. All right, great. So, how do you find the arc sign of an angle? Okay, and what, what do you use it for? You know how you take uh, the natural log of e to the x, they cancel, they give you x. They're inverse functions, and that's what they do. So the arc sign of the sine of x, they cancel, they give you the x. Or the sine of the arc sine of x, they cancel, they give you the x. All right, all right, great. So. Remember now, we can only have angles that are between minus pi over 2 and pi over 2. Okay, so with that then, we can only look at the right-hand side of the unit circle. And when it comes to the fourth quadrant, we can only use negative angles, not the positive version. X must be between minus pi over 2 and pi over 2 for the sine function, meaning that Y must be between minus pi over 2 and pi over 2 for the arc sine function. All right, what is the arc sine of root 3 over 2? How do you read it off the unit circle? Well, we have to pose it as a question. What we're saying is find the angle that gives a y value, because that's the sine, right? The x is the cosine, the y is the sine. Find the angle that gives the y value equal to root 3 over 2. But the angle has to be between minus pi over 2 and pi over 2. So where's the y value? Negative root 3 over 2. Oh, I'm sorry, positive root 3 over 2. We want the radian version of the angle, pi over 3. All right, where's the y value negative a half? Negative pi over 6. Where's the y value negative 1? Negative pi over 2. All right, so we know how to evaluate arc sine. Great. Let's talk about its derivative. Um, when you have an inverse function, then here's how you can find the derivative of the inverse. If you know the derivative of the, of the, uh, the original function, you can find the derivative of the inverse function. So here's how it works. Um, so our regular function, our, our original function is sine of x. And it has as its derivative cosine of x. 
our inverse function is called arc sine of x. And we're trying to figure out what its derivative is. Okay, we're going to use this formula. It tells you how to find the derivative of an inverse. It says take the reciprocal, take 1 over the original function's derivative, but have that guy evaluated at the inverse function. So we take 1 over the cosine, not of x, the cosine of the arc sine. We have to figure out what that is. Okay. All right, great. Well, we know that cosine squared is equal to 1 minus sine squared. And so cosine of x can be written as 1 minus the sine squared of x. All right, let's do that. Let's rewrite the denominator, replacing x with arc sine x in that equation. Cosine of arc sine is equal to square root of 1 minus the sine of the arc sine quantity squared. All right, great. That's the sine of the arc sine who is squared. Remember, they're inverses of each other now. The sine of the arc sine, they cancel out. You just get x. So, then we have the derivative of the arc sine function. It has no trig in it at all. It's 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. Okay, you can add this to your library of functions. If your derivative, if your function is arc sine x, its derivative is one over root one minus x squared. Good job. All right, let's do an example question with that. How about the arc sine of three x? Whenever you have a derivative statement, when you learn a function, then there's the chain rule version of it. What if there's more than just an x on the inside? So that's what we're going to do here. The arc sine of 3x. Okay. <clears throat> We're going to evaluate this derivative at root 3 over 6. You have to get creative with the inputs to come out with a nice output. All right, great. So when you have a function other than an x, you still treat it as if it's, you know, the, the derivative of the other function, of the outside function. So 1 over the square root, instead of saying of 1 minus x squared, we say 1 minus the inside function squared. But then chain rule says, don't stop there. Multiply by the derivative of that inside function. 3x's derivative is 3. Okay, great. Simplifying this. Um, let's take root 3 over 6 and triple it. That's what's going to go in for x. So that's going to be root 3 over 2. And that guy needs to be squared. So that's going to be 3 fourths. Now we're taking 1 minus that and put it underneath a root, and the 3 is up top. 1 minus 3 quarters, that's a quarter. The square root of a quarter is a half. 3 over a half is a 6. You did it. All right, so this video doesn't get too long. We'll have another video. That'll look just like this, but it'll be with arc cosine. And then another video that'll look just like this, but it'll be with arc tangent. And we won't deal with the other three um, reciprocal arc functions. Thank you for watching. My name is Nakai Rimmer, and I'm happy to help you through this journey. Please comment down below, like, subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. All right, take care.